Thank you very much. Um, if you're ready to continue with the next witness, counsel, you may please proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. We apologize for the delay in uh, starting this particular hearing. Uh, we, we intend to call Mrs. Fatu Jain Senghor uh, to assist the commission by giving us uh, an NGO perspective of uh, some of the significant rights violations that occurred during the uh, period of uh, our mandated investigations. In particular, she would first look at um, the, the rights violations that pertain to her main focus of work, uh, which is Article 19 issues, freedom of expression. Mr. Chair, the, the Commission would recall that one of the themes we have investigated is the muscling of the media uh, by President Jame as an effort to further entrench himself in power and to cement his dictatorship. And in that, we looked at how he had attacked uh, both the print uh, and the uh, broadcasting media. Uh, so, and we looked at it from the perspective of the media practitioners. Mrs. Senghor's testimony today would look at it from the advocacy angle, the angle of uh, human rights organizations that have worked assiduously in order to check uh, Gambia government actions uh, insofar as journalists and media practitioners are concerned during the relevant period. Uh, but her work was not only limited to Article 19 issues or freedom of expression issues. It extended to other human rights issues. And she so talked about how uh, her organization and other organizations have helped uh, to ensure that uh, the human rights uh, violations in Gambia are brought to the, to the public knowledge and the knowledge of the international community. Beyond that, she would talk about all the assistance uh, her organization and other organizations have given to uh, so-called Gambian dissidents or defenders of human rights who had to escape the jurisdiction uh, for it in order to save their lives and have passed through Senegal or other countries where they came into contact with her organization or organizations of similar character. And uh, in addition to that, uh, since we're trying to establish the historical record of what happened during the 22 years of JAME, including up to January 2017, uh, we would look at uh, seminal events during the impasse and the various activities uh, uh, that she carried out and uh, some of the issues they had to deal with to ensure that they protected the vote of the Gambian people and therefore the sovereign will of the people by ensuring that Jame left power and that the winner of that uh, December 2016 election was sworn into office and uh, to take over power and to become the lawfully and legitimately uh, elected president of the Republic of the Gambia. That would, in essence, be the main uh, trust of her testimony. And uh, we believe that these are very significant in helping us establish the historical record, but also have a better understanding of some of the things that happened in this country during the re relevant period. And I'm happy to announce that Hadidande Jabi who, uh, would lead the witness in her testimony. Thank you. Uh, you may please proceed. Can you get the witness? Yeah. Thank you. Please get a witness so we can go on. Thank you.
it's a it's, it's no problem. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we'd done saying off. I thought we'd done saying off. I thought we'd done saying off. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, Madam Witness. Afternoon. Uh, you may make yourself comfortable before we proceed. As lawyers, I know we carry a lot of luggage with us. We have to organize ourselves. Welcome to the TRRC. Thank you. And thank you for the willingness to come and testify before this commission today. It is known that we do an interpretation in a local language, so we shall be having interpretation in the wall of language which means that I would urge you to give a few seconds between my questions and your answers so that the interpretation can be heard. Okay. But today we shall go through a few issues. We shall tell the commission about your background, including your educational background. We shall tell the commission about your work as a human rights defender. The Commission would like to hear the interesting stories about your journey with Article 19. Uh, commission and the work that you did with the Gambia under Article 19. The Commission would like to hear from you about the human rights situation in the Gambia. During your work and your experience as a human rights defender. As someone who is au fait with the law and experienced. The commission would like to hear from you about the January 2017 impasse in the Gambia. January 2017 impasse. You shall also tell this commission the role you played during the inauguration of the president now, which was held in Dakar, Senegal. If you are comfortable and happy to proceed, we may continue now. Can you please state your names for this commission? Can you tell the commission where you were born? I was born in Banjul. And your date of birth, please? 10th April 1970. Can you tell this commission about your educational background? I started uh, nursery school here 
man fi la dore nursery school moy jang mi jakka jakka moy bi ñay ti ci loxo di jang gay jangi moy nursery school and uh, around the age of seven, moved to senegal e ci jurom ñaari at ma fi delo at fi and i proceeded to complete my o level and then uh, a level which is the baccalaureate ma dal di jehal na fi suma o level ak tamen suma a level di maqama mo xamne ñu ko gëna xamé baccalauréat ci français then after that uh, i briefly enrolled at the university chanta job of senegal dakar eh, ma dal di dem senegal ci université cheikh anta job i started law there eh, ma commencé fana di fa jangalu jëm ci wali loi uh, for one year di dira ben at and then later i proceeded to france Toulouse. Toulouse. Uh, where I did all my academic uh, education, I got my first degree in 95. Then I had my bachelor's in law, civil law. In 1996. Uh, in 1997, I did my master's in international and European community law. And in 1997, the same year, I did uh, uh, another bachelor in uh, English law speciality, which was a combined program between uh, a university in Cambridge to do common law. Mujhe gina ke chhi bade albina ma defa ma defa na benen bachelors chhi wali law chhi mere angale. Comparative so comparative law. And in uh, in uh, 1998 I enrolled for an LLM. In 1998 na kuma dal di def LML. On uh, a specialized program on uh, communication and media laws. And uh, I graduated for specialized in media and telecommunication law. Ci loi bo xamné ni mu ngi jëm ci walli tassam xibar ak mbiri jokko. Uh after that I started a PhD as a, as a fellow and uh, after that I came back to the Gambia. Ma continue tamen lu jëm ci walli maxamam PhD gannaaw lool na ci la dooré ñew fi ci rew Gambia. After that I did uh, uh, many other courses some short some longer mu jegi nak def na ay yenen jang yo xamne ni yi yu guddu lañ yi yu gatt in human rights lu jëm ci walli yelle fi dom adama yeah so that's in nutshell that's uh, my education background ci gattal dal lolu la moy suma jang fim toll madam witness say times it would be convenient to be looking at me okay so that All we right. can have the conversation All right is it correct that at some point you did a summer job before you entered into university? Yes, yes. After, after the baccalaureate, I worked for three months at Radio 1 FM. Wow, now baccalaureate Ni Radio 1 FM. Radio 1 FM. And I think oh, I I I, uh, I also graduated for uh, in 1995 uh, around the same time for my first graduate uh, for international relationship, international relation and development. I I forgot that bit. I didn't get that one. Okay. 1995. I'm not and it was in international relations. Apart from the education that you did, you've also served on several boards where you've gained experience. And you tell this commission about some of those committees and boards that you served as a member. 
ndax di nga muna wax nak commission bi mbolom yoyu nga xamne mbolom khalifa lañ nga liggey ci di nga ñu muna wax ci mbir momu dara uh yes i served in uh, many committees uh, uh in across uh, africa uh, liggey na nak ci bunte yu bari ci diwani africa uh few of them i think uh i was the first chair of uh, uh, a committee that was set up to work on access to information uh, after the window plus 20 yeah. and, uh, whose My. objective was to uh, promote 28 september as the right to know day and uh, i also served uh, in a, as a, in the africa regional group uh, for amnesty international wa men you translate bobu nekanisa manatuma manatuma dilu mana witness the conversation today is a bit technical so if we may take it slow so that the interpreters can get okay. the conversation to interpret well, thank man, you mun nga gatal sa cadre yi bu ko defé ñu mun ko lapato okay i serve in uh, in different board uh, the apai we call it the african platform on access to information ah ligey na ci board yu bari bo xamné ni apai african information bo dox na ci walli bataxel yi ci africa Uh, I served also in a board for to advise African offices for Amnesty International as a partner. The bunta bi nga xamné tamen ñoy yedd tamen lenn bunta yi ci diwane Africa lu jëm ci walli Amnesty International. I served recently in the committee set up by the African Commission on Human and People's Rights to review the one of the declaration uh, on freedom of expression bunta ci bunta bo nga bi nga xamne ni temen ñu ngi yedde temen lu jëm ci walli declaration di nangoto yi nga xamne ni sesele nañ ko ci walli democracy so i was part of the the committee that drafted uh, the final document bokkon na ci committee bi nga xamne ni ñoo bindo nak bunta kayit bu mu jëw bi Uh, as we speak i i chair the board of directors of grts ci jamono ji ñuy wax ni sax may jité pencum khalifa yi nga xamné ño saytu lu jëm ci walli tédéline ak doxaliné buntu liggé kay grts and uh, also member of the africa pan african human rights defenders network e bokk yi tamen ci mbotay diwane afrika afrika gi nga xamné ni ñom tamen ñoy xéntu lu jëm ci wali jofeli di africa fi mana witness from the background you have given us it shows that you have a vast knowledge in media sede bi ci li nga xamne mom nga ñu fi netalil ni bon mel na ni am nga xam xam lol ci wali tasam hibar and also very vast knowledge in human rights ak tamit am nga xam xam lol ci yelle fi dom adam at this point can you tell us about your human rights career jamono bi nak wax ñu fi nga jaar ci sambiri njangam yalla fi dom adama after my studies i came back in the gambia gannaaw suma njang nak dama ñu del ci waat fi ci rewi gambia and i started to work at the institute for human rights and development in, in africa ma commencé di liggé liggé nak ci buntu bi nga xamné ñoy xéntu lu jëm ci walli yalla fi dom adama fi ci africa i spent there three years nek na fa nak ci diiram ñetti at we worked uh, on uh, on different uh, uh, different programs ñu liggé nak ci program yu bari ñu outé i was the first uh, because the institute was set up uh, i think around 1997 1998 so i came in 1999 so apart from the management i was the first program officer man may ndel weni program officer ndax lool ñu ko sosi atum 1998 jëm 1999 and uh, we started to work on different programs eh ñu commencé nak di liggéey ci ay programme yo xamné ni bokkuñ and these programs involve the african regional human rights system eh programme bi na mu ngi bokk ci yi nga xamné ñoy doxal mbir yelle fi dom adama ci walli africa yes the well i'm sure you people from the institute already came to testify here so the the institute was really set up to fill a special gap in terms of uh, access to knowledge of african citizens uh, the of the regional mechanism bunta bi na dañ ko ubbeun rek pour tejj ak yenn digalo yu bari li nga xamne mu ngi jëm ci walli xam xam bu aju ci walli ni ñi dek foralé der li ni diwane africa uh, and one of the focus was really to train 
lawyers to understand the system. Ben nak si jubluai modern pur tagan nyinga kamne ni nyoi waitas kati kebari pun nyu kamna kionwi. Lawyers. Lawyai, lawyai, jegalin. And also to ensure that the judicial systems in the different countries, at least they were offered with the regional norms, charters, and also to create some platform for lawyers to litigate human rights across Africa. Ubi yana pinche yeye tamen ungirna kloya i mana dohal na linga kama ni mugi jamchi wali haki doma adamu si Afrika. Yeah, in a nutshell, I think that was the the the, the main purpose uh, uh, of the of the institute. Chigata dal dana kalolmo ne kon jubluwa i begena first na chibuntu lige kai bum. Is it also correct that this um, training you talked about for lawyers extended to the judicial system? Dah muna nyawa na nyanga mingga hamna nyungko don deval lawyer i ya teringian kobe cibunti atekai. Yes, they were twofold. In fact, they were more like intensive trainings for lawyers, but also for the judges. We were organizing more like colloquia, colloquiums, and also we were doing a lot of exchanges in terms of bringing other judges from different common law countries to really exchange jurisprudence and good practices. So for the law, for the judges, it was more high level, high level kind of interactions. For lawyers, it was more like really to train them to, to be part of the a community that will promote the African regional system of human rights, but also to create a new kind of breed of lawyer who will be interested in litigating human rights in their different countries. Lim doa mana mui genon nanyo kotor cincang gemuk nak lu jam cewa lu lawyer i way boleh on nanti temen atekat you magi lu lep regin genam mana ayah fal nak linga kamne ni mugi jam cincen wali ate. Is it also correct to say that you developed the program that would actually initiate Gambian lawyers? Nah mune nyawa wahne nak yo ya yatel program binga kamne dugal nanti lawyer Gambia i. Uh, yes, when I when I joined, because uh, of course the situation in the country was quite difficult, as we all know. Jamano bimai duga nak nyepham ne ne nekin bion future we Gambia jafe on the nyepham ne ko. So uh, there were little interest in uh, working, I guess, on the Gambia, and also the Gambian actors were not very involved or interested in the work of the human rights institutions. Ni nga xamne ñoo walon nak ci wali liggéey fi ci réew Gambia dal seen aajo fessu ton eh li nga xamne ni mu ngi jëm ci wali yelle fi doom adama. That struck me quite a lot because as you all know the Gambia is the headquarters of the African Commission. Ya ndax lool nak dal di won dama xool lool bu baax ndax ñep xamne ni Gambia moy makan gu magi ci African Commission du pénd ci Africa mi. The African Center also and we have we had the institute, so they were really three main uh, human rights bodies that had continental dimension based in the Gambia. But when I joined the institute, I realized that uh, the Gambians were not participating in the programs. <laughs> time they were almost still the military regime of course they've changed into civilian xamone ñe tamen ne jamono joju ñu ngi ci nguur ak soldat naam sax wéccé ko nañ def nguur civil and uh, the legal framework also was quite harsh uh, when it comes to expression public participation so it was quite clear that uh, the the framework was not really conducive for for people to, to, to express their dissent. 
uh, but also to, for for judges and lawyers to to be to be audacious, uh, to be kind of uh, audacious. So what we've realized at that time was uh, there were a lot of also court cases. I remember one vividly. I think it was Justice Chamber. When I came, I think that was quite a case when they say there are no human rights law in the Gambia. Yeah, You may continue to tell us what you were doing in 1999. Yeah, we, we, we continued the, the work with the judiciary. Yeah, then we, we did important uh, kind of uh, research. Uh, we did also some uh, some trainings, as I mentioned earlier. And, and some judges were kind of open. They were. So when we finished the first uh, program, it was very successful. Many people were interested. And then we started to move to some specific issues. And I remember we... Uh, we, we, the second one was quite a specialized one, and we said that we need to talk about issues around Locust Sunday because there were a lot of human rights cases. Uh, Remember I'm the case of single Nyasi and other cases where people will be detained arbitrarily, but uh, when people try to protect and to get bail, people were opposed uh, standing. So we thought uh, it was important that we discuss that and uh, the way Madam we witness, did it. The interpreters. Yeah. If you can just make the statements a bit shorter so that they can interpret. Yeah. So we did, uh, we did, uh, we moved to a more specialized, given the background at the time and some of the cases that uh, were also uh, kind of uh, uh, at the forefront. So we did uh, another work. And we brought judges from uh, different other countries, South Africa, uh, English speaking Cameroon, uh, Nigeria. The European uh, Human Rights Court also. Uh, send a delegate. So it, we really, what we tra what were, what we wanted to at the European time to European Union do, We 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 wanted to really create uh, some interest, but uh, also to, and also to help the judiciary to to be in a network so that they don't feel isolated. But I think overall the results were kind of uh, mixed. There were interest still in the workshops, in some of the trainings. But I think uh, at that time the lawyers uh, couldn't or couldn't work to set up a human rights uh, committee within the bar. That was one of the lawyers. Item and gisne munu yona inina fanna bo hamne ni dene muna joko na ti chendi gante. That was one of the plans to help them really to create a platform so that they can develop solidarity among themselves. Bo na lo mo ne kon jublo ibi pun na nyufe na nyu am na buntu wo hamne dene muna joko lante nyu amune di dimbalante. Yeah, so basically that didn't that didn't work out. So we kept uh, 
the, the engagement though, with uh, the judiciary and uh, in the bar. Lol nak budi uton doh new daldi japorek linga kamne ni mo neke doh ni mo neke digante judiciary agbabi. So your main aim and purpose was to actually instill human rights policies. Laws and practices. So that it will be recognized in the jurisdiction. Yes, we, we were trying that too. Was your organization also working with other NGOs or other civil societies? Yes, there were few organizations, especially local ones, working on human rights. Wow, I'm not even more than you. 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 Mr. Emmanuel Juf was the, the coordinator, so we used to work quite a lot. Yeah, Mr. Emmanuel Juf, I think there is that was the in... same Emmanuel Juf that's holding the chair of the Commission of the Human yes. Rights presently? Yes. Mr. Emmanuel Juf, I think he was the chair of Wow. You may continue. Yeah, and I think uh, 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 a defying moment for, for me personally was the next year, the, the April 10th. When the killing of the students uh, in the school when the killing of the students happened, we mobilized as Gambians working within some organizations. Uh, and witness, can you tell this commission what you are referring to as the April 10 where students were killed? Sede bi na dinga muna wa fi lera lalnyo so wa hene fuki fana bi na weri April bi njwe yetali bi lan langa lera lalnyo fufu. The incident on April 10, 11, 2000 when the students were protesting. Mwa yeye tia atum 2000 weri April fukifanya afukifanya ben jamano bi kale jangi don nyato. A dozen were killed. Ate nyu bari nyu railenti. Order wa wunde. Commission bi hali yoyu tali bi yoyu nyani yole nrei. According to the information we 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 gathered at that time, it was the security forces. Ti bata kile inga kama ni mumla indajele de ni yangu siwa le karanga nyole nrei. You may continue. And uh, on the 11th, we, we met uh, at the African Society. Uh, and we set up a defenders. In fact, uh, we, we, we issued first a, a declaration. We, we, uh, we, we declaration uh, uh, there and started some media work and that culminated in the creation of the coalition. Can you tell this commission how you issued the declaration? Can you tell this commission how you issued the declaration? Um, it was a long time, but I think uh, Emmanuel, uh, we met in, uh, in our office. Uh, with, uh, uh, and then I, with our management, we discussed it, and uh, at the time it was quite difficult. And uh, our director agreed that I can sign in my individual capacity. She will support me, in fact. Uh, she will also sign. But uh, we will not uh, sign uh, for, the, for, the, for the organization, for the institute, because we, so we, we agreed uh, to, 
to do it that way. So I, we, both of us sign. Uh, and uh, many other, Mohamed uh, Lamin uh, Silla was also the Secretary uh, General of uh, the local chapter of Amnesty International. Mohamed Lamin Silla, Mohamed Lamin Silla, Mohamed Secretary of the African chapter. He was also part of the core group. Mohamed Bokon, the group Gogo. And there were many other personalities, Demba Jawa, Mrs. Adilet, so say, I think I may miss one or two, but I think the, the first day, I think it was about it was about that, and then after the coalition started to... to You've named interesting names in the coalition. I'm not to you. I'm solo you to Danati Bolo Momo. Can you tell us whether you made headway? Having formed this coalition, of human rights defenders. Yeah, and also importantly, uh, when we started to litigate, uh, Abu Bakr Tambedu, who also came back from studies. Yeah, Abu Bakr Tambedu. He also joined uh, the, the team. Mohamed Moudal the and the team. Uh, and uh, we we did couple of cases. Uh, definitely, I hear the case you were. Uh, and uh, also there were a lot of public statements, declaration at that time. Yeah, te nak amna yena ay kado yo hamne gine onenko ay declaration ti jamano bobu. And I think many students uh, were were also got, were freed at the end. Uh, at that time also there was another coalition but I think it was set up by lawyers through the Ministry of Justice. I can't remember exactly how it was but there were a few lawyers also who volunteered because the, there were quite a lot of people who were arrested. They, they were volunteering. Private lawyers also they, they they were in uh, they were also defending uh, many cases in the courts. Uh, and also uh, when I think the 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 the, 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 the fight started really to gel, I think the, the authorities uh, got scared. I think because uh, the judges were quite brave. I remember. Uh, there were there were few cases where justice say, took really positive stance, and after uh, I'm sure you know what happened to her. And uh, there were a lot of cases also taken to the Supreme Court in relation to in relation to April 10. And April 10. So I I do believe that is the culmination or the. The, the, all those work that really pushed the authority to realize that uh, they needed to have some cover. Because when the like, report of the commission they, they set up, remember there was a corona inquest and then after they set up a commission, after that uh, they decided to reject the report of the commission. And after that, uh, they, they moved to adopt the indemnity bill. Uh, but maybe one or two cases before that. Well, in, in that process also, we realized that judges were kind of pressurized, but also human rights activists. And one of our spokesperson, Mohamed Lamin Silla, was detained by the NIA for yeah, many days. And the uh, prosecutor never brought any evidence. He was frustrated for, 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 for some time. And and when we went to the judge, I think because the case was quite sensitive. So, 
according to him of course and he uh, he he receive us in his chamber kom ni ko waxe rek mu dal ni dalal ci ni ci officeam te fo xamne dal kenen du fa tew ñun rek ak mom uh it was a friday and then he said that he would like to give bail but uh he needed to get the other side wa mom na lolu aljuma la won ni da bugana pour joxe bail way nak fok ci rek mu deglo ci benen bor bi who was he referring to as the other side the minister of justice and they were never they were not coming forward they were they were dragging their feet for many many days bu ne benen bor bi nak minister bi setu wal loi ak atté la wax ci jamono joju te ñu ñew nak be ci ay fan and uh, the person was still in detention without access to his family his lawyers so we were quite concerned ko ga ñu ko japp rek té ko ben place be tay té do du mëna jot gisan he was detained beyond the 72 hours yes won da nga commission be dañ ko tiyelu wess ñetti fan yim fo wara neka yes yeah it was the case and we wow. found out after that he was maltreated e te temen mu jegi ci len gis ne dal toroxal nañ ko so then we left e ci lolu nak ñu dem and uh, uh, the other lawyers went to their chambers and emmanuel and i we were going back to our offices and before we got to our offices we were called to say that he was released a ñen ñe ñe dal dal di ñibi may té mana emmanuel ñu continuer di dem ci suñu office way balañ fa ag ñu call ñu né dal bayé nañ ko so the judge didn't adjudicate uh, the didn't give the bail yeah uh, judge but he was released through all the means we guess eh dal dina do amu ton da bail bo xamné def nako way nak bu jégi dal jot ñu mën ti mel dal gennon na could it have been as a result of the pressure that your group was putting nek re ne hit ñe liko waral moy sen mbolo mi liñ leen doon forcé di leen pousse motax ñu bayé ko Yeah there were a lot of public statements a lot of interviews in international media amna fi wal yu bari si walu nañ ko ak yenn waxtan yo xamne dafa nañ ko ak buntu tese kay xibaari si aduna bi so he he was working for amnesty eh tete men rek bo mu ngi don jema yengatu ci wali amnesty pour laxu no uh, amnesty international amnesty uh, an organization ah amnesty ni ak mbotay la go xamne ni momi tamen ñu ngay xeñ tullu jëm ci wali yelefi dom adama so i uh, then after he, 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 he i think the pressure was there uh, and there was nothing that he did he made a declaration i think at the time uh, the only argument they brought forward was that he made a statement here at the bbc i think it was at that time a statement because he was our spokesperson mo do wacce suñ lamé ñom li ni japon rek ne mo nek rek ne dal dafa wax ci lamé ñi bbc can you tell us the actions he took after he was released from detention dañ ñu mëna jël nak mom yan jéggo la jël gannaaw bo xamné bayyi nañ ko fiñ ko tiyé won he stayed for a while uh, dafa tok ci dir bu yag rek then after he moved out of the country mu genn fi ci rew mi can you tell the commission why he found the need to leave this country mën nga wax commission bi lan mo tax mu genn rew mi I would like to maybe I'll, I'll not be able to say it in public but he decided to, to leave uh lol nak euh dana ma genal nak duma ko meuna wax nak ci mbolo waye dal genn na rew mi is it okay to just say that there was too much pressure on him to stay in the jurisdiction rew mi na wax ne dal dafa am hotel yu bari yo xamne taxon na be meuna to na tok ci rew mi yeah and uh, Wow. He was maltreated uh, at the NIA. And then got torn out on the NIA. And I think at that time also the support that people would need when they were doing human rights work was not forthcoming from uh, the you know, different di bal nga xamne mom la nit ñi daan dajal lu jëm ci walli yaxanal yelle fi doom adama dal nek ton di nek lo xamne bari won na jamono bo. You may continue to tell us about the other cases that you assisted in egal yi nga wax ñu yenen la yoy yi nga xamne yow tam dugal na ci sa loxo yo ko holition equation ten botay bobu there was the case of uh, singul nyasi eh amone itemen ben la yow singul nyasi he was arrested and denied bail as well momi dañ ko jappon te bañ ko may bail so the coalition was supporting him eh tun botagi nak ñu ko don di taxaw 
Can you tell the commission why he was arrested and detained? It was about his expression. Commission, we don't have any Japonco. He was part of a political movement, so he was quite vocal at that time. And I remember, I think the the issue of Pakistan was raised during his case. Dalde ona nyu, yeka ni abe na fa na chuo jamano leom. Madam witness. This is the second time you've mentioned local standi in the proceedings here. Can you just explain better so that the interpreters can actually interpret? Well, I'm going to tell you what local standi. I think we have to go to the Lapato and we have to go to the Lapato. I think it still exists in the in the laws. It has not been here. Uh, or maybe, I'm not sure. It's like when somebody is detained and you want to apply for bail, normally they, they, they will request that uh, you show an interest, kind of a family link, uh, a strong link uh, to warrant uh, the, to, to represent the person. Sometimes jamon. when somebody is in detention, arbitrarily, they don't give you, the, they are not able to give consent. Yeah, jamonabohamenit <laughs> So I think that uh, that issue came in, in his case at the beginning. Yakana lulu nak nyawa nanti biram nanti jangan jelben. Among others, of course, there there were a lot of delaying tactics, uh, not to give people their their right to be to be bail. Bawa banyak itu hal ayah perkerak purgis nadal tuin muna main ayah ni nid bail. And uh, after he was after he was released. Gana win ko bayi. And I think the case was dropped. Buka fena al tu mayu inga kamne momla inko tego na purle o kong mom nyu dal diko gene. And it was another well, it was a bigger case, quite serious. There were many other lawyers, but the coalition helped a lot on the human rights dimension. It was the case of Dumo and others. You remember that case? Boham the case bu grau la onak momitemen bu lawyer ye nyu gidon def linyo man awa nak. Is it correct that in that matter the persons were charged with treason? Yes. Wow. And there was a coalition of lawyers who handled that matter. Yes. Yeah, it took uh, quite some time and he was uh, and uh, he was uh, uh, his family used to come quite a lot to us. I must say here that also they, they've been very, very brave women who, despite uh, some of the challenges, will, will push. I remember his wife was quite strong. She will, every week she will write letters, she will meet diplomats, she will meet human rights organizations, uh, and really pushing uh, to, to, to get access yeah, to, to the husband. This nene waktu ni rek mungkin bendu ay letter di jokok agni ay bromi nombor tangke yang kami nyuwi tawakal senirio. At this point, did you also have confidence in the judicial system? Ya mana bisa dah nyom amon neng kulu ti eci wanti wanti atebi. Yeah, at that time the Supreme Court was still working and quite independent. Jamanu bo Supreme Court bi mungkin lagi teh teh men jamanu bo dal nyuwi dohak sen sago. And uh, I was not litigating. I was more on the human rights side. But I, I, the, the some of the judges also, uh, uh, some on the technical assistance, some were quite strong. I, I, I can remember vividly because we work with them. You further also did an observation of elections. Amgai temit sel lugo hamne ding kodan dek jaman noy san nikarta. The year of 2001. Atum 2001. Can you tell the commission about it? Inyo muna wah di jimbir mo. Yeah, as as the coalition grew grew, so we also looked at some other other human rights related issues, right to participate, and the elections were quite tense. 2001. Nekana nak mbota lagi, bukan nak buat kami mungkin kena yatu nak nyudal dion kencing yang nubuntu lujem ti wali amyalef cimbiri water agen yang unimel. And we we got 
uh, accreditation from the IEC to, to be part of the, the, the observers. And that component was managed, uh, organized by Mrs. Adelaide Sose. Uh, was, Mrs. Adelaide Sose. And we all were observers, so we went to the, we were divided, some went to the provinces, so we were all divided uh, as, as members of the coalition to observe certain polling stations, and also we wrote a report. We wrote a report, and 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 we wrote a report. Madam Witness, was it an easy task? The, it was it was okay i believe it uh, i think the situation was difficult in the country yeah. but uh, the, that work in itself was not that much difficult because it's based on data what you what you see in the on the ground and uh, you just compile a report uh, report yeah, and uh, we did that for the uh, presidential and then the parliamentary election that followed the next year. Definitely, president 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 And that was for the 20, 2001 presidential and the 2002 parliamentary elections. Lulu, president 2001 and deputy 2002 one. Yes, and uh, the report, uh, those reports really highlighted a uh, few, few uh, problems such as violence. There was uh, a lot of violence. Actually, attacks against uh, opposition uh, militants. But also a lot of restriction on, on freedom of expression and access to media, particularly state media. Thank you. Madam Witness, at this point, um, we'll take a break. Mr. Chair, if we may take the break for the prayers and then we can come back. Right. Thank you very much, my Council. And uh, thank you, Madam Singo. We will um, uh, resume at 3 o'clock. Council, is that okay? You have. If it's okay with the commission, maybe we resume at 2.30. 2.30? Yes. Fine. That's all right with me. Thank you very much. So we resume at 2.30. Um, at Meeting is adjourned. Thanks. GSM Electronics. Special Ramadan promotion starting from April 1st to 15 on all our Sloster home appliances such as two-way gas cooker, microwaves, washing machines, stand fan rechargeable that can last for eight hours, different stand freezers, deep freezers from 140 to 400 liters, blenders, stand and ceiling fans, solar panels ranging from 150 to 600 watts, different types of solar batteries, stabilizer ranging from 500 watts to 2,500 watts, originally flat screens from 17 to 65 inches. All our items are durable, energy saving, modern and two years warranty. Buy our 